Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called the baddie. So you're going to have one and a half ounces of bad stuff tequila, a half ounce of triple sec, one ounce of cranberry juice, a half ounce of lime juice, a half ounce of simple syrup, and a lime lime wedge for garnish. So how you're going to make the baddie is you're going to rim your glass with some salt and um, you're going to fill the glass with ice in a shaker, combine the bad stuff tequila, the triple sec, the cranberry juice, the lime juice, and the simple syrup. Shake well until chilled. Strain that into a mixture, strain the mixture into the prepared glass over ice and garnish with your lime wedge. And that is a baddie. Period. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Welcome back to Cocktails Dirty Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. Today's cocktail is sponsored by my good friend, Megan James, who is here with us today. With her tequila, the bad stuff tequila you gotta try it it's and pretty it's good and it's tasty it's nice mm-hmm. and smooth I can get drunk off these period we gotta be careful with these red cups <laughs> <laughs> hey Megan how are Hi. you I'm so good I miss you guys long time no see I know right it's been a lot, long time last time we were together seen... was Orlando was that the, okay I wasn't sure if y'all have seen her yeah that was the last yeah. time I've seen her since Megan, then like, all we had such a good time going it was on a time. basketball it was. I don't I think because of the way we record we didn't even really talk about it on here very much because we had recorded recorded so many episodes this is right before we started touring mm-hmm. but if you didn't know last season of basketball wives orlando megan did her first live show for her podcast and so we flew out there and we filmed with her and did the live show it was so much fun it really was fun and i had on i forgot that we did it until people were like i see y'all on basketball oh, wives. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I was like you see me on what and then i was like oh yeah we that did film really, that uh-huh. <laughs> then i was like well what did, what did we look like i was <laughs> really shocked you. i yeah. was really shocked at how much of the content they actually Actually put on there because we were really talking about booty hole stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of booty, booty, that booty young man. What was his name? Four. Four. He seemed a little uncomfortable. Yeah, we don't be uncomfortable on OnlyFans. Mm. Yeah, you got your whole booty busted wide open. How did your friends <laughs> like your live podcast? Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're not really my friends anyway, so I, I didn't expect <laughs> anything more. You did tell us that. Okay, well, (laughs) we are going to play a quick game of I'm Curious to Know, and then we'll do Weird Sex, and then we're going to talk more to Megan. So, Megan, you know, we came out with card game. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know, so we're going to ask you a few questions. So, I'm curious to know, what is your current dream vacation? I don't know. Like, I think I want to go to, like, a cabin in the woods. Mm. Like, I want to be in the middle of nowhere where, like, nobody's phones work. And we don't have no service, and it's just like wilderness Y'all. and animals in us. Yeah, mm-hmm. they have those little tiny houses in the middle of nowhere. I did do that, and it was pitch black dark. Phones didn't work. Ooh, I love to see All it. you have is a little campfire out did in the you front have to fun? make your food. I had such a good time. Very peaceful and relaxing. I was uh-huh. only there for a night. Um, I like to do that with my new nigga. I did it with a different one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm curious to know, if you if your boyfriend caught a case, would you hold him down while he was away? Um... Well, <laughs> them eyes is moving. They are moving uh, all around the room. It just depends on how our relationship was before he went in. Like if he was like one of those cheating ass niggas that I always had issues with and mm-hmm. I'm just like sticking around till I find my next thing, like you gone, I'm gone. But if it's somebody that I really cared about and he was like a good guy, like I would try my hardest. Mm-hmm. Does it matter what he's going away for? Yes. What would you be okay with? Like, if he went away for being, like, ghost from power, like, of course I'm going to wait because he got so many berries somewhere. (laughs) Um, Like, if he went away for, like, a murder, Mm. it just depends on who he killed. (laughs) Like, it's just very depending on certain things. You really Mm -hmm. holding him down. Is he a serial killer or does that nigga deserve that shit? Right. (laughs) Mm. Okay, next one. What do you consider... Wife only benefits. Like, what are you saving till you're married? Girl, I didn't give everything up already. <laughs> I'm just praying for the ring now. <laughs> I didn't give it up. Everything. Cook, clean, suck, fuck, everything. It's gone. I gave it up. I don't, I haven't saved anything for like wifely. You know what? Before you like purchase a home together mm-hmm. or something like very serious like that, I feel like that's like a like marriageable duty. Mm-hmm. That's you a know, good, that's a good. Before one. you like sign your name on the dotted line for anything with someone, that's you real, need to be locked in. Before mm-hmm. you get to share a title with someone, you need wait. To be share what type of title? The t- 
the title. Oh, of, to the to house. The home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the Megan, D. I'm curious to know, what's the biggest age gap you've ever had while dating? That's a good one. I love this one. Um... This boy. <laughs> now you already was, know which way this one gonna go. I think she said he was this boy. Like nineteen. Oh, I didn't think he was gonna be younger. <laughs> she said this boy. I thought she was trying to be funny. <laughs> he was nineteen, and I think I was like probably thirty. That's Damn. a big gap. You want to know when I knew I had fucked up? Because he was when? cool as fuck. Maybe he was twenty. I'll give him twenty. <laughs> Maybe. Where did you meet him at? Outside. <laughs> See, that's why I keep my ass inside. So I knew I had fucked up when I was at his house because he was rich as fuck, of course, obviously. Mm -hmm. I was at his house and we're laying down. And he was like, let's watch a movie. He was like, you pick it. He threw me the remote. And I was like, let's watch Baby Boy. And he was like, what is this? What? <laughs> what he is had no idea what Baby Boy was. And I was like, wait. So then I scrolled to another movie. I was like, have you ever seen The Little Rascals? He was like, what? I was like, oh, no. I'm way too old to be in your bed. I need to yeah. go. It's time to go home. Boy, he's yeah. one of my favorite The movies. Little Rascals? Like, what? Okay. He had no idea what it was. That's wild. Did you still have sex that night? <laughs> You're like, Come know, here, you baby. were already Come there. Suck on my bosom. <laughs> okay. What would your most recent ex say about you as a partner? Um, My most recent ex... I don't know what he would say about me. Like, cause I didn't really like him anyway. <laughs> and I don't think he really liked me anyway. Like he was one of those guys that like had a whole bunch of money and just wanted clout. Mm. And it's just like, I wanted money. Mm -hmm. So we made it work until it didn't. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we were ever supposed to be together. So I don't think he would have anything bad to say, but I don't think he would just be like, she was a great girlfriend. Like <laughs> Y'all probably didn't even know each other. That was the- We did know each other. We spent a lot of time together. Like he um, lived in Charlotte and I stayed in Charlotte with him for like three, four months. Mm -hmm. Like, so we knew each other and he was African and he was like the different Africans. Like he wasn't Nigerian African. He was like, what are the ones that are really, really, really dark skinned? Well, that's Congo? not specific enough. <laughs> no, but they're Somalian. No, their like skin is beautiful. Like they're like they're Was so he from Sudan? Sudan. He was Sudanese. He was Sudanese. And um it was just very like I just I don't know. It was fun. If I there remember if that they like, had a, a, a me too. Well, he wasn't African, but I the rich nigga. No, fans. I meant hers, not mine. Oh. <laughs> oh. If you, if like one of your friends was like, I've never dated a rich man. Like, I want to date like a rich man just like for his money. Would you like gear her towards that and be like, yeah, like you definitely should try that? Or would you be like, no, it's really not worth it. You're going to be bored. Well, at like my big age and like where I am in my life, I would probably be like, what do you want right now? Like, if you're ready to settle down and really be with somebody, I would be like, no, girl, they got mm. too many options. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. Like, you could be with somebody like normal and that can make you happy. Mm -hmm. Like, but if I was like 21 or 22 or 25, like even 26 or seven, I'd be like, Benny, the 20. Giddy and telling, I'm coming too. Yeah, buy me a purse when y'all go. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Pick me up something. <laughs> right. Um, okay. What is a fantasy that you have that's still unfulfilled? I don't think I personally have one. I, I keep trying to think of stuff. I've never try. had sex on the plane and I do want to do that. Oh. I, I want to do that, but it's not like a fantasy. Like it's something I just want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to go to a swingers club. Like I want to fuck in front of like a lot, like a whole bunch of people. Do you mm -hmm. really think you're ready for that? As long as like ain't nobody trying to join in, mm -hmm. I'll be okay with it. Like, like I want to put on a show for everyone else. You should have came with us to hedonism. Oh what yeah. What is that? It's a resort. So we went in December. It's called Hedonism. It's in Negril, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's a lifestyle resort. Half of the resort is clothing, no clothes. You can't wear them. And then the other part is clothing optional, but people still be naked. But it's people fucking everywhere. Did you wake up? Dicks is just slinging. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or it was poking because they can't swing, but. <laughs> It was We're just hanging out. But yeah, it was a lot of sex, a lot of things. It was open day and night. There were play parties. There was like this big nude pool where all the action was all day. People are just sitting out there eating pizza, butt ass naked. <laughs> yeah, pizza and pussy. Mm -hmm. It was wild. It was. I want to go, but I don't know. I just want to- like I want to ex experience it. Like, yeah. I just wanna... But you could go and just watch. Yeah. yeah. You got to go to Trapeze in Atlanta. I want to go, yes. but like I've been, I've been asking my boyfriend to go, and he's uh -huh. like, "Are you sure you really want to do that?" Uh -huh. I was like, "Are you sure?" 
You think he's nervous? I don't know, like, because I don't feel, like, if an old, crinkly, wrinkled white lady came up to my boyfriend and was like, oh, I want to give you head, like, I don't think I would be offended. Like, no, I that would happen at hedonism, but it wouldn't happen at, like, trapeze. What would happen mm. at trapeze? Do it be black people in there? Sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The times that I've been, it was all black people. Because I've been when it's black people, and then I went another time, and it was just kind of dead. There were black people there, but it wasn't a whole lot. So what happens in there? Sex. and Yeah, it's a sex club. Do they try to come, like, fuck, like, can I cuss? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they try to come, like, be like, hey, would you like to have sex with me? Like, how does that work? Yeah. yeah people do. And then some people, they have rooms, and they have rooms where it's, like, a two-way mirror. Um, you can see, or people can see in, but you see a mirror, but you know, and then you leave the door open if you want to let have people know join. it's okay. Um, sometimes people just come in and watch. They have like a room where you can have sex and everybody's watching. They have private rooms. They got like the, um, I don't know what it's called, but like where they tie you up on like that mm -hmm. X looking thing. Um, but like, would you be offended? Like, like if you're with your boyfriend and like a random girl or guy comes up to one of you guys and was just like, hey, like. Y'all want to fuck? Like I wouldn't be offended. I mean, I wasn't when we were in hedonism. Mm. I went with a man, and this girl that but was, was it next your boyfriend? to us. No, it wasn't my boyfriend. But the girl that was next to me, she offered to suck his dick. Now it didn't bother me. Um, I would have beat that bitch up. You would have. <laughs> Why? It was the environment, though. It wasn't like we were just. They need to have uh, wristbands that are like yes or no. That <laughs> is a great addition. Like, like maybe, red light, green light, like yellow maybe, light. maybe. Like, I, yeah, I don't mean. But I think the energy was like. It's open. And me and my man don't give off that energy. It's not like a it's not like a mean energy, but it's a don't come over here playing with what I got going on. <laughs> and then I would be so petty because like if a girl started fucking my boyfriend, like I would go find the hottest guy and like literally fuck him like I didn't have any more fucks left to get. And now y'all in here fighting. Now we're fighting. <laughs> y'all gonna be fighting that hedonism naked and that's not that's not what you wanna do. Um do you have another one? No. Okay. All right, you guys. So that's it for I'm Curious to Know. Make sure if you want to purchase your copy of I'm Curious to Know, you go to I'mCuriousToKnow.com. Now we're going to move on to weird sex. What's up, you guys? I am recording um, out of the studio because I got the Song Finch song back that I mentioned before. And I just know my grandma is going to love it so much. I had to go wipe my face because it made me tear up a little. You guys, Songfinch is this amazing company that works with several different super talented singers, songwriters, just musicians all the way around. You can create a custom song for a birthday present, for a graduation, which is coming up. It's graduation season, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, just because they have all different types of genres, so many different artists on there. You can choose the tempo. You totally get to customize a song for a loved one. I picked my grandmother because I love her so much and I wanted this song to be very singer songwritery. I wanted it to have a slow tempo and I wanted her to understand how much I love her unconditionally. And so I uh, picked an artist named Maya from Songfinch and she wrote and performed the song and got it back to me in just a few days. You can get yours back in four to seven days. They have different expedited options. And if this is gonna be a gift and you don't wanna just do the song, not only can you upload it to Spotify for free using our code cocktails, but they also have different options where you can get a slideshow, you could get artwork, you could get um, a, like a record, a vinyl, you could get the sheet music. There's so many different add-ons with Songfinch, but the song itself is, I promise, this is going to be the best gift. When is the last time you got a song that was totally customized for you? Most of us probably haven't. I'm going to play a snippet for you, but I really want you guys to go to songfinch.com slash cocktails and make your own. Take a listen. To the woman who does it all Never lets me fall Made me who I am And answers every call You're loved by so many For your kindness and strength I know 
I could only play a snippet because my grandmother hasn't even heard it yet. I'll play the full song for you guys um, after Mother's Day, after she's received it. And I'll have to share later what she thought of it. But you still have time to put in your order for Mother's Day. You'll get the order back in four to seven days. You just answer some questions and pick the different options that they have available for you. And you'll get an amazing song. Trust me. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and it lasts forever. Whether your song is from Mother's Day, Father's Day, an upcoming graduation or wedding, or just to show a loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in a top Songfinch artist. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free. So you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash cocktails and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free, which is a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash cocktails. Don't forget to share your song with us too. songfinch.com slash cocktails. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. So this week's weird sex story um, is a wild one. So there was a judge in Pennsylvania. She's 57 years old and she just doesn't take no very well. So her boyfriend broke up with her and this she is a judge. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Her boyfriend broke up with her and she was upset about it and she wasn't really taking it serious at first. So when the boyfriend broke up with her, he told her to get her shit and get out of his house and she left and she came right back. And they were going back and forth about it. And he didn't realize that she had made a copy of the key. So when he took the key from her, she already had her copy. Cause like, duh, she's obviously toxic, but he left, went to work, thought he was done with her since he confiscated the key, came back the next day. She's sitting on the couch eating cereal. And so he's just like, what the fuck? And she was like, oh, you were serious. So they're going back and forth, having a petty ass argument, especially to be at their big old ages. And, um, she said, he said that he was going to tell her mama. So. Was her mama alive? Maybe. I mean, she's 57. When I think of a judge, I just think of an old person. She's only 57. So anyway, um, he said, I'm going to tell your mama. That upset her or whatever. Well, next thing he knows, he's waking up with pain in his head, excruciating pain, because this woman is standing over him. Allegedly, she has shot him. I mean, nobody else was in the room, but she hasn't been convicted just yet. She shot him in the eye. And she said, now, what have you done? She tried to make it look like he shot himself when the police. And I'm like, bitch, you are the fucking judge. Why are you acting like an amateur at this? Maybe she does like small claims court. I don't know. Anyway, when the police got there, she had gun residue on her hand. And it turns out this is not the first time she pulled a stunt like this. She had another charge before she got off on it. She shot, allegedly, she shot her ex-husband, her strange ex-husband in his dick. And she got off on that one. So I don't know what's going to happen with this one, but what's the evidence is there the that people? she did it. I don't know. She was upset, but she said, you're not leaving me. And you're not looking at other bitches either. And that's why she shot his eye out, I guess. Yeah. Wild one, right? Y'all be careful out here with who you let in your homes, giving them keys and stuff. And everybody makes a copy. You need to get a, one of them keypad things with the coat. The regular keys are just not enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Have you guys ever threatened to tell somebody's mom on them? No. Yeah. You have. <laughs> what happened? Well, I mean, <laughs> you like, just nothing. You were like, I'm gonna tell your mama because my boyfriend's really, really close to his mom, like mm -hmm. super close to his mom. So, like when he do stupid shit, like I'm be like, I'm gonna call your mama. Does but, it make him like get in line? Tighten up. Not really, but <laughs> and do you actually call her? I have, but I'll never do it again. Okay, because now mm. you know, put the mama in the business. And yeah, and they use it against you. Mm -hmm. I bet they do. Well, anyway, you guys keep sending me these stories. Somebody sent that one to me. And I was like, this bitch is wild because you are an officer of the court. 
You're the leader of the court. Right. What like, the who fuck are you, are you what doing? What decisions are you going to be making? But I think there's going to be an open <laughs> office uh, wherever this was in Pennsylvania. So make sure y'all vote. Mm. <laughs> All right, Megs. Hey, girl. So I never have got to ask you about reality TV. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's so cool that you were on Bad Girls Club. Wow. Really acting crazy. <laughs> 15 years ago. <laughs> that is such a long time ago. It wasn't that, that long ago. It was like in 2000. I was 21, 2000. I don't know. My math well, is who's bad. counting? Yeah, it I was a while ago. I used to really love Bad Girls Club. Like, I really? remember when Bad Girls Club first came out, the only one I remember from that season was Ripley. I think that was Rip, Ripsy. Ripsy was her name. She was always drunk. And that was when they was just letting you really be. They didn't care what she was doing. But it wasn't what it's like now where it's just intentionally fighting like yeah when you first got on bad girls were you scared or were you like i know i'm gonna come on here and be a bitch um i was 21 and i just <laughs> didn't care like mm-hmm. i was like i was almost done with school like i had mm-hmm. like one or two semesters left of college i took all online classes mm-hmm. for like the, the semester that i left and i just didn't care like I was like, I could do this. But what made you be like, I'm going to go on Bad Girls Club? Because when, I used to work at this uh, bar and this girl that I was really close to just stopped coming to work. And I was like, y'all, where's Tierra? And my friends were like, oh, she's on Bad Girls Club. And so then I went home and like Googled it. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, like I, I could be on this is. show too. Mm-hmm. And so the next season I was on the show. Were you a fighter? In life. Yes. In life and on the show. Oh. In life, yes. In life, yes. And then on the show. Yes. Because, Yeah. There is a meme <laughs> that I have used rock. in my group chats plenty of time. Megan is putting on a bandana and getting ready to whoop somebody's ass. I didn't watch Bad Girls Club. I met Megan because she was friends with another friend of mine, but I knew that she was on the show. And I was every time I see like clips, I'm just like, but Megan is so sweet. Why does she have to beat these bitches up? <laughs> what were you fighting on that show? Cause like they used to I do- mean, like, what did they do to you? Like any and off. everything, like um, I like I had um, they would like throw my jewelry and clothes up to the house next door. That's why I can never now get see, on that. Uh, they would that really would ruin your property. They ruin your property. Throw your mattress in the pool. Like you know, they're just they were dirty. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I feel like people like when you're a pretty girl, they just think that oh she's like let me just try soft. you. Yeah, she's soft, and that was not the case. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes you gotta. Be bitches asses and take names. What do you think about Bad Girls Club now? Because I really do think it's wildly, like it's always been a toxic show, but now it's just like bitches just get on there just to square up. They don't even walk in and ask like, what's your name? Hey girl, let's try to be friends. Bitches just busting upside. Mm. What? Why is it like this now? I just know. Like, like, like I don't really <laughs> totally agree with it, but I think it's just like, like I think Gen Z is just so different. You mm-hmm. know, like I feel like the social media area um, era and everything has like changed the way that people change the content that people want to see on TV. Like mm-hmm. they want to watch the taboo stuff. So it's just like two bitches fighting, like the ratings are going up. Like mm-hmm. nobody really cares to watch shows that are full of positivity because like, where's the drama? <laughs> so it's just like, if you could pay girls to get beat up, like <laughs> why not? And if I can get paid to maybe 50% chance of get beat up mm-hmm. and I don't have shit. I ain't never had shit. Cause most of those girls like have never really had shit. Then I'm going to go. you were fighting for free at home. Yeah. So. You'd be fighting for free at home in the streets. And mm-hmm. the Natalie girl, she's now like a, she's really an integral part of like bad yeah, girls but club. Natalie has always been an integral part of bad girls club. Like Natalie bad girls club is Natalie Nunn. Like she's, she's ate, slept and drank bad girls club since she was on the original bad girls club. <laughs> So the fact that she's like the EP over the reboot makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now, did, what did you think about your experience with Basketball Wives? Either of them. I mean, the experience with Basketball Wives was better because like obviously I got treated- You were fighting. With, wasn't fighting. I got treated with more respect. I got paid more. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I didn't really like any of them either. Really? Do you still want to do TV stuff or are you kind of over it? I mean, there's nothing like getting paid to be yourself. <laughs> Yeah. So it's just like, I just get to be me. Like, I, they give me money and I get to go be Megan. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, I'll do it again and again and again and again. Do you think that you're looked at as a villain or do people like you? I think people hate me. <laughs> I think people hate me. Literally, I think people hate me. Why? Why do you think that? Because I feel like, you know, throughout my TV career, like, I've always carried, like, a negative, messy persona. Mm. But it's that's my persona on TV. Like, it's not who I am as a person. And my mom has told me, like, my, well, my grandma's told me my entire life that to know you is to love you because nobody's going to like you off of first impressions. And I was like, 
I don't know how to take that, but I don't care. Like, <laughs> fine. Did it's you just, ever go through a moment, though, where, like, I haven't been on a show nearly as big as Bad Girls Club or Basketball Wives, but um, when I did Temptation Island, when the show, filming the show was traumatic, first of all. It was mm -hmm. fun. I would do it all over again, but there were some traumatic moments just with producers and how everything was going. Mm -hmm. But when the show actually aired, and people also hated me, mm -hmm. but they also liked watching me, there were certain things that like fucked with me. Like I was like, I kind of went through like this little dark phase of like, oh my gosh, like and what? I can't even stop it. I can't, this is on USA Network. It's like, I can be like, hey, can y'all skip this episode? <laughs> yeah. And then you don't know what's going to come out. You know that you behaved really crazy. You don't know the drunk, like think of the times when you got drunk and don't remember what happened and mm -hmm. it's about to be on TV. And Woo. oh my gosh, like I was in family was watching it. My parents, I remember my dad was watching. I was telling my mom, tell but they didn't realize what was <laughs> going to be going on. <laughs> and there were just some, I had some really shameful moments. Did you ever have like moments with reality TV where you were like, fuck, this nope. is, I wish I didn't do that <laughs> ever. You were just like, mm. nope. Like I've always been like a very outgoing, not like, I don't like an, uh, like I don't give a fuck or two or three person mm -hmm. like my whole life. Like even before TV, like mm -hmm. it just is what it is with me. So like, I don't ever get embarrassed by anything that I do. Cause like, if I'm going to do it, then why be embarrassed by it? You know what I'm saying? It's like if I'm one night I get wasted and then I don't know what happened, like I have to take some accountability. Like if this is what they caught on camera, like they can't show anything that you didn't do. That's so true. just be cautious of what you do if you care. Mm, it don't always happen like that though. Yeah. But I mean, then if it doesn't happen like that, like you can't be mad at the network. No, you definitely <laughs> You got to be can't. mad at yourself for being like, Whatever you happened. Have, and that's not what I'm talking about. You can't yeah. be mad at the network and you can't, they're obviously going to play it. It's going to be what it's going to be. But a lot of times internally. people get so mad at them. They're like, oh, you know, they see things that they don't like and they're like, fuck this person. I'm going to sue you. And I'm going to sue you. And it's just like, girl, like you did time. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they talk about editing and yeah. I can understand mixing up stuff to make it look like things happen in a different order. But it's like, well, you still said You still said shit. it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what order it went in. You still talking about that girl. So, mm. Mm. Now, um, how has any of the TV stuff, if at all, how has it affected your love life? Because mm. <laughs> mm. you just did a show. Honestly, like, I feel like it brought me and my, boy my current boyfriend closer. It brought us mm -hmm. closer because, you know, it's just really hard sometimes dating people when they don't understand, like, what you really do for work. Yeah. So, like, outside of TV. Outside of just, like, they don't understand like the concept of being a reality TV personality. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, because you don't, don't have a traditional I job. I don't have a traditional job. Mm -hmm. So the fact that like my boyfriend took the time to like come stay and he filmed like a few episodes with me and he understood like, okay, this is this, this is this. Okay, this isn't really this. Like, I think it made us closer and I made, I feel like it made him understand like, okay, so you're like this on TV and you're like this in real life. You know, mm -hmm. um, because we start before we started dating, he had never even watched a show. He didn't know who I was, like apparently. And like when he started dating me, people would be like, "Oh, you date Megan? You date Megan?" He's like, "What? Like, what are y'all talking about?" And they'll be like, "Oh, she used to beat bitches up." Mm -hmm. Like that's like the first <laughs> thing that you that tell somebody that say. doesn't even really know you. So I'm glad that um, that experience on Basketball Wives really brought us closer. I feel like because he starts to, like you get to understand like, okay, this is this and this is that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like previously in my love life, like. It kind of just helps. Like, it's just like, I don't know. I feel like guys are clout chasers. So yeah. it's like me being on TV. I feel like it's given me access to like other men that I probably wouldn't have had access to. And if I had, like, if I was a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and you were a teacher for a quick minute, weren't you? I was. I you was a teacher, a teacher all through COVID. Wait. Yeah. What? Great. Megan has had so many <laughs> so careers. Many fucking jobs. What great business you teach? I taught college. You, you were a professor? I mean, technically. What were you teaching? Um, it was like an online like economics class, like, but it was for trade schools. Like, you know, like, um, what is it called? The one that uh, Lil Romeo used to do the commercial for, Remington? Is it that was? I think it was. I thought um, it was ICDC. It was like one yeah, of those. Yeah, like, 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 Maybe it was ICDC, but the one, I worked for Remington as a professor. Um, but it was like a professor's assistant, but I had when students. When they saw you, were they like, You're It was, everything was online. Okay. I, I feel like a lot of the students put one plus one together because obviously my name, name is Megan mm -hmm. James, but some of them didn't even notice. Wow. I'm really shocked. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. What did they say when they did notice? Did they say something to you? Yeah, they, they would be like, Miss James, are you like the Megan James from TV? <laughs> And I'll, I'll, sometimes I would lie and be like, no. Sometimes I'll be like, yeah, but like, you know, your assignment you is still due at two o'clock. Yeah. 
<laughs> have you ever been somewhere and you hoped that people didn't recognize you? I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I'd be looking busted as fuck, going to the grocery store and stuff. I all the time mm -hmm. be looking busted like, as fuck. Sometimes, I, like, I'm not going to even lie. I have rolled out of bed, brushed my teeth, did not comb my hair, put on my clothes from, like, yesterday that was on the side of the bed that I had just got out of and went to like go get grab some food real quick at the grocery store and I'm like please don't nobody see me in here mm -hmm. that's what hoodies are for even but girl you can tell when a bitch is looking raggedy under a hoodie girl mm -hmm. yeah. when that hair not done the, your face be puffy it's <laughs> Red. just like I don't feel shame for looking ugly I don't like it I just don't want nobody talking to me like don't come up to me, ask me for a picture when you know I look like. Yeah, obviously I'm not camera ready. Will you still take the picture? I do, and I just be like, oh well, if they post it, I'm just ugly today. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I don't care. I'm bees like that sometimes. So, Megan, what type of dates do you be going on? Um, well, here in Atlanta, like my favorite type of date to go on is hookah date for sure. I, knew you were gonna say <laughs> I love that. hookah. I love to eat. So most of the time we do like hookah and food, but like sometimes like we do like really cool stuff like. He'll set up like a movie night. He'll go get like all the stuff that they have at the movies, mm -hmm. like popcorn, a blanket, and like he'll move our couches where it looks like like rows of movies. Mm -hmm. oh, and like we'll cute. watch like a cute movie. Um, I don't know. Like I just like I don't I don't know. I consider everything as like a date. Like I saw something on Instagram where they're like, "Do you consider going out to eat as a date?" Yeah, sure. and I'm like, "Yeah, like like why not? That is like a classic date. Yeah, going to eat." I love a good day. You know what else is a day? A cocktail making class, and I'm hosting one May 18th. <laughs> so make sure y'all uh, y'all come that to the is cocktail a making good class. Date idea. That's a fun. You get to get a little tipsy, mm -hmm. make it, then make a baby after. Now yeah. wait a minute. Now speaking <laughs> of babies, do you want babies? Yes. Like I've been trying to get pregnant for like a long time, and it's just not working. We got to send you some positive vibes in that direction. How many kids do you want? Just one. I'm never doing. I'm going to do it once and never do it again. Boy or girl? Um, I don't care. Have you picked out names? Yes. What are they? Six and seven. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, how are you going to pick if you just have one? Because it whatever happens, just however I feel in the moment. Oh, okay. Mm, I have a nephew named Seven from one of my dad's other kids. I don't ever talk to the child, but his name is How seven. does he spell it? Normal. Every, oh, okay. Every yeah. time I see it, it's always spelled differently. differently. A lot of times, no normal. vowels. Like S-V-Y-N. I've seen it like that. Or I've seen S-V-N too. Oh, I haven't seven. seen that one. Do you want kids still? Yes, girl. You don't have to look at me like that. I'm just asking. I'm I can't wait. Have a I'm gonna have twin girls, Apple and Olive. I can't wait to so get cute. here. Yes, I cannot wait Those to have my little names. babies. I was like, if I have twins, I want to name them Pin and Pia. Pin. And oh, like Penn Bagley Dilly, whatever, like from you. I'm so obsessed with him. Oh. His real name is Penn. Have you watched, there's a guy on um, Instagram and TikTok and stuff, and he does the things where it's like when you post something somewhere and he goes and he tells you where you were. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? It reminds me of you. That's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he says it like, stop posting stuff in real time. Like, it's so easy for people to find you. And this is how he will look at a video of you driving down a street and be like, oh, I see that this sign is facing this way or the sun, the shadows. It is scary. And I'm like, there's really crazy people out there. Yeah, but who even takes the time out to look up stuff like that? Like somebody- A needs, serial killer. He needs to get arrested. Well, I, uh, he's making us aware. He ain't doing it him. for bad. He's doing it for good. Mm -hmm. but That's what you think. You're right, because you just <laughs> never know. He could be hiding in plain sight like a lot of these criminals. Mm -hmm. Like the judge who was shooting up dicks and eyeballs because the men didn't want to give it to her no more. I still can't believe she did that shit. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> what do y'all think about Aoki Lee Simmons dating the old white man? Who I think he's 65. He's either 65 or 69, and she's definitely, I think, 21. Did y'all see the pictures? Like, I think she's way... Like, I think she... If I could do it all over again, I would have did it. <laughs> <laughs> to get things? Or just what? Like, I wasted my 20s trying to, like... Because, you know, like, everything isn't for everybody, right? So, you know, right. like, how the psychic lady that was here mm -hmm. last week yeah. um, was saying that, like, you know, some people are meant to find their people in high school and be with them forever and others, like, find them later in life. Like, I thought I was one of those ones that was, like, meant to find my person, like, right out of school. Mm. And, like, I wasted my 20s, like, in stupid relationships or, tr like, chasing after guys trying to make it work. And then when I look back on it, it's like, I should have been the bitch that's, like, on that one – what's that one show, um, Get Out? where she was looking up the basketball players like in advance. Oh yeah. 
at like plotting plotting i should have been that girl like looking for like doctors and lawyers and like i would have rather wasted my time with those at 21 than the, the niggas MRS i wasted my time plan. with yeah i get it um i think well that i don't get it well, I get the MRS degree plan, like looking for somebody that's going to be something. I get it. Like she's fucking 21 years old. Not like the 65 part. She's not still her. a kid. And like, okay, you want to fuck with a 65 year old man? If I was 21 and a, I, I would fuck with a 65 year old man if I could do it all over again. Do you think she, like, why, why not? Why? The, why? why not? <laughs> <laughs> so what's funny to me is, I'm, it's a few things that's funny this about all disturbing. this right now. Now you have shared many times about how you used I'm to sharing. like older men and then i saw her do a video it was like somebody had pulled an old live and she was talking Told to her, her dad and she was saying like you need to increase my budget and he was like no like you work you get modeling gigs and she's like well i'm saving my money if you don't raise my budget i'm getting a sugar daddy i think that she called his bluff and she did Period. it um her mama was upset and then i just it was a little cringy to watch as these things usually are for me um it felt like now that the pictures have come out and we see you on the beach with this big old man kissing him and stuff, like not flattering pictures for either of you. And now you're posting these videos showing it felt like you're begging him to take you to these places and it doesn't seem like you got to go. Then you come back and now we see these stories that it's all over. I don't really think it's over. It ain't. I think that's just something that up. somebody put out there. I think. I just wonder what goes on in her head and what's going on in her life. Because it's also like, you're not a regular girl. Girl, look you at got, who your mom is. And then it wasn't and her mom on that. I mean, well, when, her when mom, you look at her mom, that wasn't was, the same. The age gap was but, the same, but her mom yeah. was 17. I mean, it's they're both nasty. Like, her mom was a kid. She was 17. Her mom was 17 and Russell Simmons was 35 years old. Same thing. I don't care how much money you need. This is. I think that it's a problem. And even... When I did like older men, I can go back and be honest and like look at some of those moments where I was dating old niggas, whether they were rich or not. I didn't feel comfortable with it. It did feel like a, this I, is definitely like. I wonder how long, I wonder if this is a phase for her and how long it will be. And then I wanted to ask y'all to the point of Aoki and the, the things like making the jokes about getting things and chasing down the ball players or people who are going to be making money. Do you think that large age gaps are more acceptable when it's like a transactional relationship versus something that's supposed to be more substantial? I just think they're real. more acceptable whenever the man is older. Yeah. Cause and people rich. don't treat and the rich. women the same when it's flip flop. Yeah. I don't know. Like, if I could do it all over again, I would be Aoki, however you say her name. Mm -hmm. But grow, like growing up, I never like in my twenties, I didn't like older men. Mm -hmm. I liked men that were my age. In my thirties, I liked I liked men that were younger than me. That's like I thought old guys were disgusting. Like they all look like somebody's grandpa. And I was like, they I, are somebody's like, grandpa. I know, but my boyfriend now he even has like speckles of gray hair because I mean like he's it. almost forty, <laughs> and I'm like, dye that shit. I'll be trying to pluck it out. <laughs> Then two more are gonna grow. Don't just, pluck it. Just dye it in his sleep. Do but you think well, money or love is more important? At this big age, love for sure. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're well off. Like, I'm not a broke bitch. So it's like, I don't need an, I've really never needed a nigga to do anything for me. It's just like an extra, you know? Mm -hmm. So at this age, where I wanna, what I wanna do in my life, where my life is going, like, love is way more important than money. Like, mm -hmm. I could date somebody that doesn't make as much money as me mm -hmm. and be okay, cause like, I was okay before, I'll be okay after, and I'm going to be okay in between. Mm -hmm. um, in my 20s, because if we're talking about the young girls, date for money, bitch. <laughs> don't date for money, bitch. I'm telling you, Little don't bitches. waste your time looking do for love in your that. 20s. Do not listen to Megan. <laughs> do not do I'm that. telling you all from a person that's experienced, no, a person that was looking for love in my 20s. No, you sad uh -huh. and ran through with a loose vagina. And Stop. With STDs you ain't and sad and you're no. Your soul is going to be detached from it. Don't, don't do it. you don't have to do all of that, but... <laughs> You don't have to fuck everybody that you go on a date with. And if you do, don't tell nobody. <laughs> you gonna well, tell yourself, to yourself. Back. No, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I was looking at them pictures of Ayoki and I was just like, this is so sad. I just felt very sad for her. And I wonder like what her whole family was feeling because they probably felt sad too. Like, Girl, damn. No, they already, was trust upset. me, her I family her mom fucking knew. Huh? Her mom fucking knew. Y'all think, think her mom so? didn't know? No, I don't think she did. And if she did know, I don't think she still was like liking it. 
girl, who's because taking my I, passport at 21? Because guess what I'm going to do? But, but she's Go still, get another one. But the home, thing, thing is, you probably had a lot more independence than she does. She's still begging her daddy on Instagram Live to increase her budget, girl, a.k.a. allowance. I have a daddy to beg for an allowance. Exactly, but that's my point. So it's like she so, still needs them for something. It's not like But which is more of a reason why I should have dated the old 65-year-old billionaire <laughs> bitch. Like... <sighs> I would just be like, I I just, she what bored. are we going to do? She what? Bored. Well, yeah. I think she needs some money. I don't think she's just bored. I think she needs a little money. For what? You live with your mom. But they don't have no don't money think, right now. They've all been on the internet begging. I think she needs it. I think she wants it. Exactly. Me too. Yeah, because I also think that when you get accustomed to being very well off, your level of broke and needing money is it's a lot different. different. Your expenses are a lot different the stuff that you do. Like you were also just in college, you're at Harvard getting an education and you model. You can work. Maybe you don't want to work. Right. Well, she already said she's working and she saves her model checks. She's not spending that on any of her expenses. Where is she modeling is, for? I don't know, but mm. she models. Like, I haven't seen her on model. any big campaigns. Maybe I haven't didn't notice because I'm not like paying attention to what's Me neither. I honestly yeah, I wasn't paying attention until I saw her with the yeah. old nigga on the yeah. beach kissing. And then I wonder what her sister said to her. I wonder what their conversation she was like. like she I was friends. Wondering. She was like, it is sexy. Period. <laughs> I don't know what I would say to my sister. I would just be like, bitch, why were you out in the beach like not looking? These are not cute pictures. What were you thinking? But yeah, did you have been... any friends? You got friends and the friends are probably fucking AFP Are they too. alive? They are. <laughs> <laughs> they, she, that little baby getting ran through. Um... So Kiki and I went to lunch the other day and we were talking about um, Diddy. Mm -hmm. You know who Diddy is, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a Diddy party? Mm -hmm. Really? I've been to multiple Diddy parties. What were they like? We never had a Diddy party attendee sit in one of these oh, chairs. Oh, honestly, like I had a time in my life. I don't know anything about any freak offs, mm -hmm. but like- You don't know about the freak monster activity. I wasn't involved. If there were freak monster activities, I wasn't involved. I didn't see any. I didn't witness any of that. The Diddy that I know is a nice guy. He's very nice, very pleasant, very like respectful, mm -hmm. and he just likes to have a good time. And every Diddy party that I've ever what been does a good time mean? A good time for me is you get to the party, it's free alcohol, free food, a whole bunch of like you know A, B, C list celebrities in their best dress outfits. Um, like in his backyard, he used to. Um, I guess I don't know if he rented a dance floor or if it's like permanent, but like there used to be a dance floor in like this big tent like a white tent on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then he there was a DJ booth and there's like sections. Girl, everybody would just be living their best life. Like, and they, Sunday's best. So just, it's all about just looking at what everybody has on. No, like people used to actually have fun at those parties. Like people are dancing, smoking weed, like vibing. You know, like typical LA parties, everyone's just like sitting around and like what, it, like it's not like that. Like every Diddy party I've ever been to, I had the time of my life. And it was just because like the vibes, like everybody treated everybody like a normal person, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I like, I met Madonna, like the very first Diddy party I ever went to, I met fucking Madonna. Really? Like you don't like, I was just like, you don't meet Madonna at like the fucking grocery store. I wonder if right. she's going to be on any of the tapes. I just get really nervous about everyone who said they've been at a Diddy party. Cause what, do you think you're going to be on a tape? Was you fucking at I the wasn't, Diddy party? Didn't I just tell you I wasn't a part of the freak off? She said she wasn't a part but of none of that shit. She said shit. the freak off. That don't mean that's sex fr wasn't happening. That's Girl, the freak was, off part. That's the freak off part. Okay. It's the sex part. It's the thing like about club. Diddy parties, they'll start at like nine o'clock at night and they don't end until like 3 p.m. the next day. Well, I so, bet. You got to sneak the little babies out. So by like 12, 1, 2, 3, you know... Cause you know I'm a granny. Like, All my friends hours. know this about me. Like I'm not the girl that's gonna go to the afties. Like we can hit one or two spots. I'm not going to the after after. Mm -hmm. So like I would leave the house probably like midnight, one o'clock, and go home. So I don't know what happened after I left. But as far as the time that I was there, it was a normal house party. How did Maybe you said, get do the not invite? Call her about no allegations. She was not there. <laughs> I wasn't. I mean, I, I lived in LA for twelve years. But um, does an invitation come in the mail? And it has like a like a no, girl. Game of this is stamp? not this is not the Vampire Bridgerton. Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Bridgerton. So how, somebody just texts you like, "You want to go to a Diddy party?" And you're like, "Yeah." Yeah, but like a lot of people would text me, and also like I'm I was cool with his kids. Like you know, I was in the industry in LA when I lived there, mm -hmm. and like we're all like around the same age, so I would be in a lot of different like events that was cool with his kids, mm -hmm. like. You know, like, Diddy even follows me on Instagram. Like, 
He was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I have nothing bad to say about him. So you were shocked to see this come out? No. Okay. I wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) I just mind my business most of the time. (laughs) Not most of the time. I mean, I get it. It's like you can have an experience with somebody, but when you hear about it, it's, maybe it's not so far removed. I mean, I've heard a lot of shit about Trey Songs too, but every time I've been around Trey Songs, he's been at them and nice to me. I guess that's the interesting part is we we talked about this on the show one time and it was we were talking about we had a man on the show, I don't remember who, but we talked about like if you it's know that if if somebody if there's rumors that like somebody's a creep or a pedophile or raping bitches and it's like I knew all this and like but I'm around him and he's cool. Like, is it just like, I don't care that this stuff is being said or since it's not proven, we don't, My thing or because they're rich, we don't care? It has nothing to do with their money. It's like, people say shit about me all day long. Like, I'm sure no one ever said you raped somebody. Right, but I'm saying like, people have negative things to say about me literally on like right now i'm in the fucking bahamas newspaper the fucking prime what? health minister of the bahamas wrote an article about me today calling me a liar about what we'll get into it i'll tell okay. you because <laughs> like, he, no, he need to be doing prime ministry but stuff. what i'm saying is like people talk shit about me all the time so like who would you be if kiki was like oh i'm gonna have my my homegirl megan um come on the podcast today and you're like ew like the girl that they said that did this and the girl that they well, said they did that. Well, but that's different. If it's it was not. like people just say she's a bitch and she's messy as opposed to, hey, we're going to bring this guy on who there is said that he's sex trafficking children and drugging men and raping their buttholes. And I, it would be a little different. But what it if would. Kiki the al- like, al- but allegation what if Kiki like, was that? like, that's my friend and he's a cool person. Oh, you can do that episode by yourself. Unless we're going to make <laughs> this about rape or we're going to talk to him about that, then that's deal. We're going to be little Oprahs today and we're going to, that's what we're going to talk about. We're not going to sit here and kiki. No, yeah, but I don't. I don't judge people because I'm always judged. Like people can say whatever they want to about whoever. Mm -hmm. Like I'll keep it in the back of my head. Like if somebody's like that person's a thief, that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna go to dinner with this person or I'm not gonna hang around this person. But I'm gonna watch my person, my wallet. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not going to like x them out. Like I don't judge people. I don't. I do. I Uh, I think we all do. Yeah. um, I think uh, it depends. For me. I don't judge them by what others tell me about them. Well, sometimes I do that too, just to be honest. Uh, (laughs) Depending on what it is. It's like certain stuff. Some stuff, like, okay, she steals. Okay, well, we can still go. Yeah, I'm keeping my purse closed. No, I don't need you to hold my bag. I got it, friend. Don't you worry about it. But something more serious, yeah. My guard is going to be up in a different way to where it's like, oh, I don't want to go or I'm not, I don't want to be there. And then I think sometimes what sucks is when you didn't hear about certain things and then you found yourself around somebody and then later it's like, oh, well, I did like him. It was nice to meet him. But now I'm kind of scared because that's the other part of it. It's not even always about just what other people say, but when people do things against other people that violates them in that way, not like stealing, but like rape and stuff like that um and this is for anybody rich famous regular mm-hmm. doesn't matter but when you get around somebody like that and you're around them and they charmed you then it makes you just wonder and i don't know i've been in some sticky situations before and that feeling doesn't feel good so i always feel best staying away mm-hmm. yeah i can't i can't and i'm judging and that's just it is <laughs> what it is judging. i don't have to say anything to you about it but so in my Diddy, head i am so if diddy was acquitted from all these allegations. That doesn't matter to I'm just, me. I'm, no, I'm asking a question. <laughs> if Diddy is acquitted from all these allegations and then next Christmas, he has a huge Christmas party and they're like, hey, Kiki, uh, you want to go meet a Diddy party? You would say no. Yeah, I don't want to go. I would, I would still feel nervous because I also know that people get acquitted. I mean, I think that lady I talked about earlier shot that man in his dick and she, <laughs> the charges were done. OJ, okay. <laughs> he it's a, it's a, it's a, It's a lot of people who have done things, who have gotten off. I personally know people who have done really bad things. And I'm like, how are you still walking among among us? Um, And you did that shit. And it's like, sometimes it's a technicality. Sometimes it's money. It could be all sorts of things. But I just know just because the court didn't Could it ever be that they didn't didn't do it? It could be. It could be, but I won't find out. And it's I, like if Bill Cosby invited us, I'm not coming to test to see if you're going to drop the pill in my drink. Some baby. things. And it, I mean, it's just all a level of comfortability because whether I heard it from a trusted source or just heard it in the streets, you know, it just it just depends because it's some people that give you a, you hear bad things about them and you just are not interested in being around them. It doesn't have to be that dramatic. It could be something small. Yeah. Like, like she's like, still. Yeah. <laughs> she what? Like, is this one girl that I do not like? Uh-huh. 
And every time I see her on Instagram, I write under the post, she's still, because she stole my t-shirt. Oh, well, yep. But see, that's because you don't mind hanging around with bitches and steal. I didn't know she stole until she stole my t-shirt and I never hung around her. She stole it out of my boyfriend's closet because he was cheating on me with her. Oh, That was a wild one right there. Now, how did you figure out she stole the t-shirt? Because she left, stole the t-shirt. Because I left the t-shirt in my nigga closet. And then she posted a picture or something? In my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's yours. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I just know I protect my energy. So I, too, would not be able to go to the Diddy party if he did get acquitted and was like, we want cocktails to come. Would I be like, oh, my gosh, I wish he wasn't raping bitches and men. Men. Um, I, but, yeah, I would have to pass well, that. It don't matter who it is. I don't, I, I also, don't like it. I also look at it like the people that are now wrapped up in this and, like, you just kind of have a bad name because of, like, what you were being around because of the glitz and the glam. So do you think he's done? Do you think it's over for him? Unfortunately, I no, I don't. But. I don't think so. I think that there's a strong possibility that these things could go away. If not everything, something, um, things will fizzle out. And People are doing this on Because a this is not exactly new. I think it's just he's had a reputation for a really long time, mm -hmm. um, whether the stuff is true or not. And now it's so much easier to get information out there and spread information, rumors, gossip, all that shit with social media, the internet, and all of that. So, yeah, I don't think he's done. Mm -hmm. He's, mm, he's, he's not too done. powerful. He's mm -hmm. still gonna have a party and Meek's still gonna be busting that booty hall open. Do y'all be doing anal? Absolutely not. Man, I wanna try it again. <laughs> why? <laughs> because Did, Okay, well, why you say try it again? Because I've tried it multiple times and it's just like, I can't take it. Did you like the challenge and that's why you want to do it again? Why aren't you listening to your body? It's saying Well, the no. thing about it, and I know this is going to sound so <laughs> gross and I don't care. It's just like when you shit, right? Mm -hmm. Like it feels good to shit out. So Sometimes. Most sometimes, of the time. Sometimes yeah. it hurts because it's like, God damn, I took a big one today. And I was like, this is huge. But so, and then like I've had like fingers in my butt before so and it felt good. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe if I put a, a dick in there, like mm -hmm. it will feel better. But I can't ever get it past like the pe like the little part, like the head part. Like it does mm -hmm. not. It just I can't. We'll have to teach you some techniques. Sis. Yeah. Good luck. What techniques you got? Well, it's like a, it's for really, Megan and the people, not for me. It's all about <laughs> the the breath work. That's really breath what it work? is. All about your breath work. It's all about your breath work. So like do you, you have to take like deep breaths, or is it better to do shallow breaths? Deep when it's going in. You, it's better to like when he's putting it in, take a big, it's almost like yoga. Take, take a big, deep breath. And then you, you start to exhale when he's pushing it in. It doesn't burn. It doesn't I mean, burn. When you said it burns, it's like, no, mine don't be, it, cause it's like your skin tearing. stretches. It like burns it tears. Yeah. My booty don't tear, y'all. Well, what size is his pee pee? Well, <laughs> this isn't the only person that I've had anal with. I mean, it's been different. But I'm saying, like, sizes. what size is his pee pee's different sizes? No, well, she's saying she's done it with more. Oh, with, mo with more other people. people. Yeah. Oh, so okay. all the sizes, nothing has ever, it's never ripped. My butt has never ripped. But you got to go slow. If you're just trying to, like, ram it in there, then yeah, it might it be. You got to go slow. It was like, knock, knock. No, door's <laughs> locked. Don't know where the key <laughs> is. Can't fucking do it. Uh-uh. That escalated. We went from talking about booty hoes. Um, all right. I guess we'll move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we're going to read some advice letters. And Megan J is going to help us help you. So listen up. People with penises, whether it's on your body or you're dealing with somebody who has it on their body, I am talking to you. We've gotten a lot of advice letters where some of you are a little bit insecure about your penis, your sexual activity in the bedroom. You don't know what you're doing. Maybe you can't get up. We have the solution for you. And you know what it is? It's a penis pump. Don't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Specifically from Bathmate. So, you know, aside from the fun that you'll be having when you get your penis pump from Bathmate, it actually has a few health benefits. So it's going to flush toxins out and it also helps you to maintain the tissue health in your penis. Um, and the greatest benefit of all of it is that outside of when you first use it and you get hard and you're having a great time and everything, the benefits can be felt for up to two weeks. And it's really easy to use. So you simply just fill your bath mate with warm water, slide that little pee pee in and <laughs> compress the gator against your pelvis. You guys, it literally works like a vacuum. And right now, Bathmate is offering 10% off our listeners' first order when you go to bathmatedirect.com slash cocktails. That's bathmatedirect.com slash cocktails. 
to get 10% off. Again, bathmatedirect.com slash cocktails. The link is in our description. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, ladies and gents, this weekend I went to Yao Atlanta, Y-A-O Atlanta. It's in a very interesting spot. The spot doesn't look date spotty, like the, the outside look, but inside it's a delicious Asian-inspired themed restaurant. They also give massages at the table, the cocktails to die for, food amazing. Make sure you order the lettuce wraps. Tell them I sent ya. Bye. back from indecisive diane and it is time for the advice if you have a question that you would like for us to answer on the show please email us advice at cocktailspod.com okay so first one it says help me get this nigga sex drive up Hey, Medina and Kiki and Megan. Um, I'm going to get straight to the point. I know y'all hate y'all long advice letter. If it doesn't have details, I hate it. I feel like this one ain't going to have enough, but we'll see. I have a nigga I've been dealing with for three years almost. We basically ghetto married. We live together, share expenses, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I knew what that meant. <laughs> He's 34 and his sex drive has tremendously decreased. He says it's due to age and the flame from the beginning being gone. I've been interested in trying new things like sex clubs, sub dom play, orgies, all of the unorthodox things when it comes to sex, but he is totally against it unless it's a threesome. Mind you, he has gone to a sex club once with an old relationship, but says it wasn't his thing. We have one threesome, but it was okay. I still didn't truly get my fix and I am ready to try other things, but he is not open to it. My question is, how can I convince him to try new things with me? The only thing he seems to be interested in is threesomes and I'm ready for something else. Thanks, y'all. Hmm. Oh, I got some advice for you. Okay. He's cheating on you, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Leave. You think so? Girl, sign number one. When a nigga stop wanting to fuck you, he's cheating on you. He's cheating on you. He's cheating on you. Trust me, I've been through it. He's cheating on you. <laughs> He's cheating on you. Leave. I do think it's weird that he's saying that his sex drive is down, but, but, he wants but a threesome. it's up for a threesome. Oh, yeah. That part. That I doesn't, that part. that's contradictory. It would be one thing if he wasn't interested in anything, then it's like, okay, maybe he's having erectile dysfunction and he's embarrassed and he don't want to say that part. Um, but he think he got enough dick for two and he don't have enough dick for one. You? That's weird. He's cheating on you, sis. Cheat back. <laughs> like, what you think, Medina? Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess he, he need, you need to find. <laughs> she, yeah, you need to find some happiness. Be single. Be si I don't know if he's cheating on you or not, but why don't you just try being single? You sound like you have a you have a very strong, healthy sex drive, and you want to try new things that somebody doesn't want to try with you. How old are you? 20. I don't think she said. She said he's 36. And he's then she's 34. Expenses. And make sure she's if you get all married. You know, just get dressed up, start going out with your girls and do your own thing and see if he has a reaction to it. I, I really don't, don't come know. come home. Yeah, I don't know what this this sounds like it's gonna get real toxic. Um, he might very much be cheating on you, but go have fun. Go to the sex club. Go through that phone. <laughs> the to most you toxic need to lose some advice. weight, go through the phone. <laughs> Did you say if you need to lose weight? <laughs> you know what? Being sad never helps me lose weight. It actually makes me gain it. So I don't know. Assess your body type, girl. <laughs> it depends on what the sad is. Boy sad uh, makes me lose weight. Mm. The other sad makes me get fat. Mm -hmm. Any well, emotion makes me get let fat. Let us know how it works out <laughs> with the ghetto marriage. The next one is titled Help. Hey, Kiki and Dean, I'm a 21-year-old dental assistant going back to school to be a dentist this fall. I'm in a relationship with a white guy. I'm a black girl from the ghetto, far east side of Indianapolis, Indiana. Just moved to Myrtle Beach. 
in South Carolina because I'm, con- I'm but I'm contacting you. Um, I'm contacting you guys because I need some advice. Me and my boyfriend been together for about a year now. He just got a new job as a teacher and transitioning from doing flooring for a guy that didn't pay him for his work. He was so depressed working for this man. Depressed. She's trying to amp us up to tell us why he ain't got no money. (laughs) Depressed, period, after he quit his job. I didn't realize how stressed, how stressed I was taking care of every, how stressed I was taking care of everything during that time. It was low-key draining. Plus, I was trying to get myself together without a car at the moment, and dude was helping me get back and forth to work until I found the car that I drive now. During that time, dude used to talk down on me about not having a car and now, all wait a minute. That is wild. This same man. This same white okay, man. Okay, continue. I just had to make sure. Oh, he's a he's, white man. I missed that. Part. She told us at the very beginning. Yeah, I missed that. Um Y'all love to tell us that. Do y'all think that white men somehow are better or are going to do things much different or automatically treat you with respect because they have a stereotype of being a certain way. If that's what you're thinking, any of y'all stop the email now. That is not the it's case. Not stop the case. thinking white is right. And then if you sorry. just want to tell us that he's white just because you want to let us know that he's white, put that in the parentheses. Like, I just am so glad I'm with a white man. Because sometimes I don't. I also don't understand why they Y'all put it. I think they put it in there for that reason. Just like the girl who was mad and wrote us a follow-up. It's like, okay, even somebody in the comments was saying something about don't talk down on interracial relationships. Interracial relationships are not the problem. But y'all be telling us that these men are white because you had a different expectation. Because mm-hmm. if he wasn't white, you wouldn't have said it. If the whiteness wasn't relevant to the story, you wouldn't have said it. Right. But go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so during this time, the dude used to talk down on me about not having a car and always used it against me. I hated it. I hated him for it. I still kind of do. I guess it still bothers me. Um, I didn't sure. like the way dude was was at the time taking his anger out on me when we both were going through stuff at the same time and never not once I took my did I take my anger out on him. Even though I was still paying for things why of his while paying my bills too. I don't know what happened, but stuff we went through still kind of bothers me to this day. We've been going to church together again lately, and he's been doing the, his best lately, but I just need help to bring it up without dude always getting defensive or sensitive about talking it out. Dude is a pastor's son, and I just don't know what I got myself Girl, into. Girl, you got too much going on for me. He's too much. He's a teacher. He's a pastor's son. He's white. It's too much going on. <laughs> I need help with communication here, basically. I'm not really good at it, but other, but other, but it, other, I don't know, but at least God <laughs> put it on my heart to ask you guys about it. Not God. I'm so sorry it was so long. On the long, sex podcast. But I always listen to you guys since 2022. Thank you. When I discovered y'all working as a housekeeper, I love you guys so much. I'm a Libra and he's a Pisces, if that helps. <laughs> so, if sent from my iPhone. Thank you so no, much God for tell listening her, to us. Because we're going to tell her the right thing. And we're going to, and we're going to be nice. <laughs> so we're going to try to be nice because sis, what's wrong? Why do you, you want to keep him? That's the thing that's looming because I thought you were going to ask us, like, how do you get over it now that you have left him alone and you still find that this issue is haunting you and maybe you have trouble opening up with the new men that you're meeting, but it's still him. And it's like... Like on the episode that we had with Tamara, sometimes you're used to somebody, they're comfortable, they're familiar, whatever, and you're trying to make it work because they were there, but people go back to what's comfortable to them. It's comfortable because y'all know each other. The getting to know you phase is not always fun, Mm. um, no matter how much anybody tries to make it out to be that, and especially when you haven't met the person. This person has you still feeling anxiety from some shit that happened before and you did too much um that was nice maybe uh some good things will come your way afterwards but i don't think that you should try and work it out with him 
if you do, I don't know what to tell you because I think you should leave and you don't, if you need to leave, you don't really need to have a conversation about that because it's going to turn ugly. I always look at it like whenever in life when I was dating and like, because everybody has been through a moment where maybe you're doing something for somebody, for a man that you know you are beneath this or right. you, let, you let somebody do you dirty because I do feel like when you keep getting done dirty, sis, you're allowing this. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? And then the way that I and also- That's the comfortability of it. Yeah, the balance that I, well, the contrast that I kind of put in my own mind is like, okay, so I'm, I keep dealing with this man who's not treating me right. These are not the things that I have said that I wanted. If I accident, because maybe you don't want to get married. I look at it like, would I want this forever? Am I okay with this treatment? Everybody likes to act like when you're dating, that's not what you're going to get when you get married. People don't change like that, bro. Like what you get is what you're going to get. And that's what you're going to keep getting. Or would I be and okay? it probably will go downhill. It will get even before worse. it goes up. Yeah, like, when you have babies and marriage and stuff like that, it exposes all the real raw person. And so another thing that I like to look at is like, if I, okay, maybe I don't want to marry this person, but if I accidentally get pregnant by this man, Ooh. would I be okay if my child is just like him? Would you? <laughs> or can he take you to handle it? Because it sounded like, no, all he could do is drive you there because you was paying his bills. Now you got a whole nother host of problems. Yeah, and like, is this the person that you want your child to look And up if it, it, we don't know you. Everybody can make their own decisions. Like if that's, if this is what you like are okay with, which I don't think you are because you sat down at a computer and typed these words, you need to reevaluate a lot. Let it go. Let it go. I'm missing, like, do you feel like you owe him something? Or, or do you also, like I said to the other girl, do you just want mixed babies and you felt like this is the first white man you got and you got to hold on tight? Because really, maybe you don't feel this way, but plenty of people do. And that's just a sad truth. I mean, just what is keeping you there? Answer that question. And if it takes you more than one millisecond to answer, that's not the one. Mm. You should know. Like, people can have bad days and go through things. And the good outweighs the bad. So you know why you want to stay there. He does make me happy. He has changed, blah, blah, blah. But if he really changed and did so much more than going to church to see his daddy, I'm sure that's where y'all going, um, you wouldn't still be harboring these feelings. Megan, what you think? You already said she did too much. No. <laughs> Megan looking Megan's at the like, wall. She's like, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> what? <laughs> Leave him. I was like, I think I got lost at like preacher's son. <laughs> <laughs> and I just stopped listening. I'm sorry. You are 21 years old. Get outside in the street. Get in the field. Get in the field. In the I field. mean, really. Go have fun. You're too young to be having to deal with this type of shit. You really are. Um, okay. Well, I guess that's it for advice. If you guys <laughs> need some help, hopefully it's not of dire need. But if you want to hear our take on things, email it to us. Advice at cocktailspod.com. And now we will move on to the cocktails. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so if you have a cocktail that you would like to share with us, please email us cocktails at cocktailspod.com. All right, um, Medina, you want to read oh, one? Is there? Or, I oh no, on I, I have one. Mm. And then, do you have one in your mind? It's not like. Can I talk about how I found out my ex was cheating on me? Yeah, let's just hear that. That is cocktail mm -hmm. worthy. Really? Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, you guys. So. <laughs> I was with this man and I loved him so much. Oh my God, he was so fine. And we was together for a little bit. And um, I noticed that his phone kept ringing with a number that was not saved in his phone. Mm. Um, back in the days, I was not bold enough to like go through nobody's phone. Really? These days I am because I will go through my nigga phone every day if I, if I feel <laughs> every like Every day? It. And I never, this is why I love my man so much. I go through his phone all the time. Even though I've chilled out a little bit, mm -hmm. I never find anything. Like no DMs, no texts, no calls. Does he know you go through it, or you do it? Sneak, you still sneak? I sneak it? and do it. He knows I go through it, but it's random. So it's like if you are cheating on it's me, like a pop he, quiz. He deletes <laughs> exactly. He deletes it immediately. But I really don't think my man's cheating on me. But back to the old nigga. So <laughs> the phone kept ringing, and I was like, "Who the fuck keeps calling this man?" So mm -hmm. he was asleep, and what I did is I took my phone, and um, I took a picture of the number. The number. Mm -hmm. Smart. 
So I took a picture of the number. This is before Cash App because, you know, now I'll be taking pictures of numbers and you put it in Cash App and tell you who it is. Mm-hmm. With uh, a picture. I did not ever even think about that. Yeah. But this is before Cash App. So I took a picture of the, of wow, the number. Wow, so you don't even have to go try to find them on social media. You can just get right to Wow. Right. Because people be using fake numbers. Some people have troll accounts. So they got 511 things. But your Cash App, you want that money That's to That's going hit. straight to your bank account. Mm-hmm. So... um. I was like, how oh, am I going to... So then I got the number, screenshotted it. I um, called the number and the number would not answer my FaceTime call. But as I'm calling the number, like they didn't answer the FaceTime call, but like it'll wait like a few minutes and they will call my nigga back. Mm. And so then I was like really down to get to the bottom of who She's this like person was. Call my phone. So oh, then... Man. You know, I've always been a little messy. Mm -hmm. So I take the number and I post it on Instagram. (laughs) And I was like, this number keeps calling my phone. Does anybody know who this number belongs to? (laughs) So then I get a DM. And the guy, this random person DMs me and they're like, that's an AT&T phone number. He worked for AT&T? How did he know? Because he worked for Uh AT&T. I didn't know who he was. It was like some random fan. He was like, call me. I got you, sis. So I called him. You were not playing. You didn't care if he had your number or not. Mm-mm. I called him, <laughs> and um, he he was like, "This is an AT and T number." He looked up the number. Guess whose fucking account the number was on? Who? My niggas. Oh he was, hell! He no. had her on the plan. On the plan, bitch. Mm mm. So then what did you do? So I woke his ass up. I was like, who the fuck is this? And why is like, who is this? And he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm of like, course. this bitch keeps calling your phone. Somebody keeps calling your phone. I FaceTimed it. She's not answering. Call her right now. He calls her. The girl picks up. I take the phone from him. I was like, who is this? She was like, Mel's bitch. Ooh, I, said the, I said his name. <laughs> Bleep that. And I was like, oh, okay. And, um... That's how I found out that my nigga was Were you shocked that she was like, this is who it is? What you gonna do? I was really shocked. She was <laughs> I bold. would have been too. I was she like, was. She, she was did bold. not back down. Like, you calling all. me. What's up? See, like, you just, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would so much rather be in love than love for money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is stressful. <laughs> you gotta keep. Like, I don't have time for that shit. My nerves, like, the way that I'm set up these days, I think I would have a heart attack. Like, I'm getting old. I don't have time for that type of shit anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but I even feel like even little Aoki dealing with the little 20, 67 year old, however old he is, <laughs> that is even the, there's a version of that that is stressful because it's like, bro, what are you know this person doesn't even care about you and they got 50 other bitches that they doing this You don't with. know if he don't care about her. I, you don't know, but I'm she, she might be making him, like, you know, he she might be giving him something to live for. He don't care about her. And I bet when this got all on Honestly, Instagram like that. I would be like afraid that, of a heart attack. He was probably stressed that this me. made it all over. He wasn't even realizing. He he don't even know what an Instagram is. He was like, what? Now Angela knows. He What? This is why. Girl, you know what else happened to somebody that old? That his, um, his ex-wife left him for her sister's husband. He's been dealing with trauma. No, that's that white people shit. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Anyway, uh, that was a good cocktail, Megan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened to you, Fred. But that's all right. You're on the other side now. Every time one door closes, one opens. Yeah, you learn Mm -hmm. your lessons. You move on. Boop boop. And now I know how to like go through phones. Like now I'm bold enough. (laughs) I'm bold enough to just do it. You have a new skill. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love how proud you are about I don't going give a damn. phones. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to do this. You could be a private investigator in your next career path. Mm-hmm. Maybe you start a new firm. I'll come work for you. <laughs> um, you guys, make sure that you are following Megan and keeping up with all of her endeavors. Check out the Bad Stuff Tequila and make sure you're following us on, uh, well, sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cocktails. We have new content every week. We're working on some new things. So maybe you'll see it by now, maybe not, but it's coming. So go ahead and sign up. We do lives. We have new bonus episodes. We talk to different people, do stuff together. All sorts of stuff is on Patreon. Megan, Um, did you have anything you wanted to plug? No. You good? Okay. You guys can just follow me at Megan James on everything. Check out my article in the Bahamas newspaper about me oh, being a wait. liar. <laughs> about you, you being a what? Go- okay. So I have a friend. My f- I went to my friend's house the other day, and she was telling me about her friend that went to the Bahamas. She went to the Bahamas for- on a group trip. Mm-hmm. Um, she realized that she needed to shave her legs. She shaved her legs and nicked herself, like cut herself, right? Oh, no. And- was this a group trip, like a hoe trip or like no, a no, church no. trip? Girl. Church? 
it was, was a group, group trip, trip so it was like, like a church girls, trip girls guys like okay like friends. The, the lady the friend a friend trip okay they were white anyways so the she shape <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> she, yes, she, shaved her legs, she shaved her she legs. She it. naked herself, right? She, I think I saw this she, on Twitter. You did. Mm-hmm. She cleaned up her cut, and then she went to um, Exuma. That's the island that has the pigs or whatever. Okay, I want to go there so bad. No, you don't. I don't. I don't. They shit in the water. The pigs? Yeah. Where else they gonna shit? They're not going to the toilet. I thought they got out to use the bathroom. Like they're not going to a bathroom. So she goes to play with the piggies and the piggies. And she gets in the water, and the next day she wakes up, and her leg has this like excruciating pain, right? Oh. And she's like, "Fuck, my legs, hurt. my leg hurts," but like she's not really paying any attention to it. So she goes back to America. A few days later, she wakes up, her ankle swollen. Infection. She goes, she goes to the doctor. The doctor is like, "Oh, like, like, what do you think it is?" She's like, "Oh, well, I was a little drunk last night. Like, maybe I hit it or fell or something. And I didn't mm-hmm. realize it." Mm-hmm. And he gives her some ibuprofen. And she goes home. Like probably three days later, she wakes up, her leg is as big as a fucking elephant. She uh-uh. goes back to the doctor. Um, and they do a blood test on her and they, uh, find out that she has the flesh eating bacteria disease. They Wait, had like a, staph infection or like no, something else? Something else. And they had to cut her leg off like to her torso. Your friend got her leg It's cut- not my friend. It's my friend's friend. <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> to be clear. But my friend was telling me this like to warn me like, cause she knows that I travel a lot. To be She's careful. like, just be careful. So I took it to Twitter. I mean, to TikTok. And I wanted to warn other people. Mm-hmm. Girl, the people in the Bahamas is not happy with me. Because they told me, they're, they're saying that I blamed it on the Bahamas and that I'm messing up their uh, tourism. What well, was the pigs shitting in the water? But what they said was that it could happen It could happen anywhere. Like this flesh eating bacteria is in Miami. Technically, I guess it could. Yeah, it and could. And they're like. It was happening in Georgia but, at Lake Lanier. Yeah, but my thing is, is like it happened in the Bahamas. Right. So you're just giving so the like, facts. So like, why are y'all mad at me? Girl, the whole prime minister, hold up. Where's my phone? <laughs> I can't believe they wrote a whole article about you making a post on TikTok. You should ask him to come out here and come on your show. Girl. <laughs> Girl, I'm probably banned. But could the- you imagine if something banned. like that happened? All you was just trying to do was get that furry shit off your leg so you get your beach flicks off and go hang with the little piggies. I would be so mad. Your whole leg has to get cut off. And then they they screenshot it and use it use that to cite oh, their source. Oh, it's a real newspaper. Yes, girl. I've seen one of these in a minute. It says fake news. Darville says American reality TV stars <laughs> claims of fresh flesh eating bacteria and says fake news. So this is Megan James. <clears throat> so one of my homegirls, homegirls, I just lost told her all the story. You don't have to replay it. Bacteria <laughs> in the Bahamas, and she shaved her leg, nicked herself with a razor, then went on a pig island. <laughs> Four weeks later, no leg. <laughs> Why is this in the Bohemian newspaper? I don't Famous. know. But, but y'all that. be careful with them legs and shaving and stuff. Maybe you should sign up for laser hair removal. I'm pretty sure I have a promo code. I'll put it in the description. <laughs> That's what I do, and it 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 does great. Not to worry about getting it because you won't have to shave. That is actually a good little because I still shave, but I like only shave when I need to. But that does mm. sound like a hearing this, and I do want to go to one of those little pig islands. You do? I do. What you want to do with the I piggies? have this weird obsession. I love little piglets. Like I think the pigs are have just. Have you ever so played cute. with a pig before I, in your uh, life? No. Oh, okay. That's M- why like you a have it. like you know when you go to the petting zoo and you see them, but I've never got to play with like I literally. I went just, to a farm and it was pigs and the shit wasn't as cute as it is online. It looks cute <laughs> online, but it's like when you see them bitches, <laughs> it's like this is why people don't eat pork. <laughs> <laughs> I, still eat I do thing. still eat pork because I eat some bacon, but I was just like, oh, I, I get it. I don't eat pork, but I do want a little piglet. I was just telling my boyfriend the other day, I was like, I really want to get a, just a little baby piglet, raise it, and like. A little Wilbur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little baby. That is wild though, that you are so famous that you're on the Bohemian news. Don't go there though, bitch. They might snatch you up, throw right, you in the back of a truck. They'll probably stop me at the motherfucking border. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or let me in Access and take me denied. to jail. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, y'all, um, if you live in the Bahamas, you'll have to come to America to see <laughs> Miss Megan or somewhere else. But make sure y'all sign again, sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cocktails. Make sure you're following us on Instagram at cocktails podcast. I am at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Bean. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. goodbye. Bye. 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 Wait on the dry. Bye. 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 Bye.